We are at the causeway, the part of the causeway where you're just now starting to get onto the islands themselves. And this is the exit ramp behind me. I'm actually going to step out of view so that hopefully you can see things. We just have torrential just waves crashing on shore. All right, good afternoon once again. I'm NBC2 meteorologist Rachel Dunzing cutting in briefly to let you know that there is a new severe thunderstorm warning for Glades County. This one runs until 1:15. Still keeping an eye on that rotation that's embedded within this thunderstorm. We can see the green and the red there next to each other. That shows that there is some spin. There is some rotation going on within that thunderstorm. So there's the potential for water spouts in the Gulf of Mexico as a result of this thunderstorm. We are still out of that forecast cone. It has not shifted back to the east. We are still out of the forecast cone but it's not an impact cone, so we could still have some impacts as the days roll on. We're expecting around two to three feet of storm surge here in the Florida Keys. When we first got here a little before three o'clock, there was hardly any water here, and now it's definitely up to my ankles. You had a better chance of dying there than in a shark attack. And so. you have a better chance of getting struck by lightning in the state of Florida than getting attacked by a shark. Not today. Our lightning chances are Excellent. non-existent today. <laughs> well, so if you want to get outside, you don't have to worry about getting attacked by a shark or getting struck by lightning. If some of those clouds are still remnant from thunderstorm activity, they have a lot of electrical charge within them. That can actually attract charge to the rocket itself. And essentially, the rocket could get struck by lightning. And that can cause a bunch of issues. You should know that if your house has ever been struck by lightning at any point in time. But if you do want to head out and enjoy our beautiful sunrises or sunsets, thanks to that Saharan dust, I do want to to bring your attention to one thing in particular, and that's the air quality index. Right now, it's at a moderate level. I've made my own little forecast maze. So the first thing this morning you're gonna walk outside is that lower humidity. Well, when we think of forecasting that lower humidity, yeah, it feels fantastic in the morning, but that leads us over here to our temperatures actually warming quickly once the sun rises. If your weekends tend to be like mine, where you have one really productive day and one day where you just lounge around and do nothing, today Today is the do nothing day because it's cloudy, it's rainy. Yes, it is an overall very gloomy, not what we want on a Saturday kind of day. North winds around 10 knots, seas up to three feet, light chop on the inland of the Bay Waterway, so no advisories you need to be aware of. However, the Gulf is a bit chilly right now, dropping down into the middle 60s. Also because of that, keeping out for the manatees as they make their way up the river and find themselves into the warmer waters. And there are many words that I could use to describe today's heat. Most of them would probably get me in trouble. So for now, we'll call it stupid hot and we're already feeling like 97 at 10 after 10 in the morning. We'll talk more about this stupid heat coming up after the break. Talking cold blast, but no. Oh yeah, no. <laughs> we're very relevant. We're Florida cold, okay? We had to grab the sweatshirt, darn the luck, as we walked out the door this morning. <laughs> the jet stream is more than just a boundary between the cooler air to the north and the warmer air to the south. They're actually almost pathways for storm systems. As they develop, they ride along the pathways and notice the southern jet right on top of Florida. So that means more of these storm systems can develop and our weather can become much more active in terms of rain and this sort of up and down in our temperatures. Well, hey, that is always uh, fun. I do like seeing the occasional waves in the Gulf, but we're happy to be out of the cone of concern, that is for sure. We have meteorologist Rachel Dunsing tracking both of these tropical storms. Rachel, what's the latest today? Yeah, right now we are still tracking Laura, and yes, you made a very valid point that we are still out of that forecast cone. It has not shifted back to the east. We are still out of the forecast cone, but it's not an impact cone, so we could still have some impact as the days roll on. However, Laura is still pretty far away from us moving over the Dominican Republic right now and we'll move into Haiti by the end of the morning and then by tomorrow we'll be crossing the island of Cuba. But again, that is not until tomorrow. The mountainous terrain of Hispaniola, the Dominican and Haiti taking a toll on Laura. It still looks good on the satellite imagery, but wind speeds have decreased now down to 45 miles an hour as it moves to the west and the northwest at 18. So I want to show you when we could experience some of those tropical storm forest winds if we could experience some of those tropical storm force winds. I always like to show you this version because if you can look at the screen, you see that there is a pretty clear yellow blob that indicates those tropical storm force winds. I just think it shows it really well, isolates it, so we can track it pretty easily. And we see that while the center of the storm itself might go right over those islands, right over Hispaniola, right over Cuba, the winds are going
going to be more shifted to the east. So the strongest winds are going to be on the east side of the storm, and that will take them over South Florida and the Florida Keys by tomorrow evening. There are tropical storm watches in place for the upper and lower keys, and even though Florida, including the keys out of the forecast cone, tropical storm force winds are possible. And notice that as we go through Monday and then into very early Tuesday morning, and yes, the center of the system is away from us, but we could still have tropical storm force winds not too far off of shore, which means the occasional tropical storm wind gusts is possible, especially from Everglades City through Marco Island and as far north as Naples. But one thing I also want to bring to your attention, our winds are expected to remain out of the east and the southeast. That is good because it's not going to bring the potential for storm surge. We were worried that when this storm looked like it was going to be closer to us, those winds would be on shore and we'd have surge issues. That is not looking likely now, but of course we still have at least the chance with those tropical storm wind gusts. So where could they be? When could they be? So let's check out a wind gust forecast. I showed you just the general idea of where the, of where the winds could be. Let's check out just how strong they could be. So later on today, it will be gusty. At times we will have wind gusts up to around 25 to 30 miles an hour. That's not too far off of normal for this time of year. But again, we've definitely had worse even just within thunderstorms during rainy season. But by tomorrow afternoon, as that storm gets a little closer to entering the Gulf of Mexico, that's when we could start to experience some of these gustier winds. Now I want to bring to your attention, this is the wind gust, not the sustained wind. So this is one or two minutes of strong winds. And we could have those tropical storm force winds even in southern Henry County, southeast Collier County, and again out toward Marco Island and Everglades City. It's not going to be an all day Monday thing. It's not going to be an all day Tuesday thing because by Tuesday, yes, it will still be breezy, especially in the morning winds about 25 to 30 miles an hour gusting. By that point, the system will be moving away from us. I mentioned that we do have tropical storm watches in place for all of the keys as well as the Gulf waters just offshore of Collier County. Again, this does not include Collier County itself. This is just for the Gulf waters offshore for the potential for those gusty conditions. In the northern Gulf of Mexico, we do have hurricane warnings and watches in place from all along the Louisiana coast, and that is thanks to Tropical Storm Marco, which is almost a hurricane this morning. Winds are up to 70 miles an hour, already gusting at 85, and moving to the north and the northwest at 30. Now, this is a pretty small storm, so it's going to intensify quickly, but that also means it's more susceptible to wind shear, which is across the northern Gulf of Mexico right now. So it will likely remain a Category 1 as it approaches the northern Gulf Coast, potentially weaken to a tropical storm right before landfall. But again, regardless, there are going to be impacts from two tropical systems, potentially two hurricanes along the northern Gulf Coast. So think of your friends and family up in that part of uh, part of the country, part of the Gulf, and make sure they are prepared for a one-two punch. Here at home, quickly, let's run through your Sunday forecast. We're sweeping clear on Southwest Florida's only live Doppler radar. We're going to be clear through lunchtime, but after lunchtime, 2 to 3 o'clock, some thunderstorms will set up closer to the coast. They're going to stick with us through the, uh, through the afternoon and into the evening hours before eventually calming down through the overnight hours. And then Monday into Tuesday is when we'll start tracking some of those outer rain bands moving our way. We will also have those breezy conditions like I just showed you. By Wednesday, the influence of the tropical system away from us and our weather goes right back to normal. That's your NBC2 First Alert Forecast.